Have you ever had a question about your Nutanix environment but weren't sure where to start? We're going to cover that today. Hello, and welcome to Tech Topics. I'm John Burton, a systems reliability engineer here at Nutanix. Today, I'll be discussing the Nutanix support portal and the resources that it provides. I'll also be discussing how to use the portal to solve problems either on your own or with the help of Nutanix support. Let's get started. If you haven't already, you'll need to create an account. Account authorization is based on the assets and support contracts associated with your email domain. This is true for both Nutanix hardware and software only accounts. Once you've logged into the portal, you'll be presented with a number of tiles. The first tile is the support dashboard. This presents you with a list of cases you have open, as well as the ability to open new cases. We'll come back to this tile later. The next tile presents your insights information. The information here is based on the data your clusters send to Nutanix using Pulse. A color-coded heart indicates how many of your clusters are affected by known issues, such as field or security advisories. Based on the number of clusters affected and the advisories involved, the heart may be green, yellow, or red. This is one of the many benefits you receive when you enable Pulse on your clusters. Closing out the top row of tiles are announcements. This is simply a list of new items available on the portal, new software, security or field advisories, end-of-life announcements, etc. In addition to the announcements available on the portal, you can also subscribe to notifications. If you click on your account name and select Preferences, you can choose the types of updates you would like to be informed of in the portal and via email. I strongly recommend reviewing these so that you stay up to date on the latest issues. The next tile we'll look at is Documentation. In the interest of time, we'll focus on areas that can help prevent and resolve issues in your Nutanix environment. In addition to documentation for PRISM, files, COM, etc., we also feature a section on solutions as well as an extensive knowledge base. Suppose you're installing a new Nutanix cluster and would like to reference Nutanix's best practices for configuring networking. As you can see, we have guides for configuring networking for multiple hypervisor platforms. Or, Let's say you have a VM image in an OVF that you'd like to deploy on AHV. Our KB system contains numerous task-oriented workflows as well as other information. We also present information on other operational tasks such as upgrades. For instance, if you have a cluster running an older AOS version such as 582 and would like to upgrade, the AOS upgrade path tool will identify the latest AOS versions that you can upgrade to from that release. In this case, we can see all the eligible upgrade targets as well as which releases will automatically be made available if your cluster is configured to download new AOS releases. Along similar lines, Nutanix maintains hardware compatibility information for AOS and hypervisor versions, minimum AOS and hypervisor versions for Nutanix partner solutions, and guest OS and feature compatibility with AHV. Speaking of AOS, it's always a good idea to keep your software up to date whether your clusters are running long-term supported or short-term supported AOS releases. More information on LTS versus STS releases can be found in KB Article 5505. Remember to set your notifications so that you're advised when new releases hit the portal. Nutanix generally waits until at least a dot one release, 591, 510, etc., to enable automated downloads. Also, if you're running AHV, it's important to check update availability after upgrading AOS. AHV is packaged with AOS, so if there is a new version, it will be listed in the hypervisor upgrade dialog after the AOS upgrade completes. You can also keep track of your installed base of Nutanix through the portal. For each asset, you can see its contract details, AOS and hypervisor versions, and whether Nutanix is receiving pulse data. For each Nutanix block, be sure to update the address where the hardware is located. If the shipping address for parts is different, 
note that as well. Having this information up to date speeds up the dispatch process in the event of a hardware failure. Directly related to this is creating or updating the primary support contact. When Nutanix support fields an automatically generated case, this information is used to determine who we contact regarding the issue. This can be an individual or it can be populated with a mailing list. Even with these resources available, eventually you may need to open a case with support to solve an issue. There are a few steps you can take as you prepare to open a case that will speed resolution. It's always helpful to perform a full NCC check and collect that output. If we'll be troubleshooting an ongoing issue or an event that occurred at a specific time, you can also gather a bundle of cluster logs from the health dashboard in PRISM. Both of these items can be attached to the case when it's opened. Be sure to set the correct priority for your case. Nutanix allows any priority case to be opened through the portal. P1 implies that the system is unavailable or the environment is in an unusable state. P2 cases involve instances where the system is available but is experiencing problems impacting performance or productivity for users. P3 cases generally involve issues that need to be investigated or resolved but are not user impacting. And finally, P4 cases are for general questions like documentation requests. The help text shows the SLAs for each case priority. Note that the response time is halved for mission critical support for P1 to P3 cases. While these are our SLAs, Nutanix support is continuously working to minimize the time it takes to respond to our customers regardless of case priority. Be as verbose as possible when describing the issue. Timing, what's affected, which VMs, hosts, etc and what troubleshooting has been attempted. Be sure to provide your block serial number, hypervisor version, and AOS version as well. You'll be asked for these by the SRE if they're not listed. Based on the information you enter, the portal will attempt to find an answer for you automatically. Before you submit your case, you'll see a list of links to documentation and KB articles. Definitely check these out as they can save you time in resolving your issue. Never hesitate to call Nutanix support directly, especially for an issue where your environment is down or severely impacted. We can be reached at 855-NUTANIX, option 3, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That being said, opening your case on the web is the best way to get assistance for most issues, even for P1s and P2s, especially if you've already performed troubleshooting. The context you provide in the case subject and description helps expedite resolution once the SRE picks up the case. At some point while you're working with Nutanix support, it's likely that you'll require immediate attention for your case. Your SRE may be sick or off shift at the time you're ready to work, so you need a new case owner. Maybe the problem has become impactful or you're not happy with the progress of the case so far. Whatever the reason, you need attention for your case. When this occurs, you can leverage the Escalate feature on the support portal. When you escalate a case, you'll be presented with a list of reasons. The issue has become critical, the SRE isn't responding, you'd like native language support, or you're not happy with your case's progress. You'll also be asked to provide as much detail about the escalation request as possible. This information is important as it allows the on-shift duty manager to assess the situation and take the best action to resolve your request. Remember, for general case updates or requests for contact from your SRE, you can simply add a comment to the main page for the case. After your case is resolved, you can expect to receive an email survey requesting your feedback. From these surveys, we're able to measure three things. Your satisfaction with the SRE who handled your case, your overall satisfaction with the Nutanix product, and, if applicable, your satisfaction with the parts replacement process and the engineer who performed it. If you share concerns about the product or how your case was handled, you can expect to receive a call from a support manager to follow up. Hope this helps and click subscribe to receive further updates.